So, uh, I just watched a documentary on the Vietnam War. It was called uh, The Bloods of Nam. And it was about black Marines and soldiers, sailors, um, Zoomies, who, um, you know, went to Vietnam and were really fucked up by it. And some of the black soldiers, um, well, they were all black soldiers in the thing, but one of them, um, the way he articulated how much he loved killing and how much it changed him because of the psychological high that he got from killing. Um, it, it was similar verbiage to what I've spoken about a little bit, probably haven't been as open about it as I should have, because I think some guys need to hear it, or a lot of guys need to hear it, um, civilians don't need to hear it, because it sounds really crazy, at least I don't think so, but, but other fucking war fighters need to hear it. Because when you get to the point where killing is one of the most joyful and exciting activities that you can do, uh, which is where I was, and I wasn't special, I think most of us were like this. When you get to that point where your greatest fucking joy is killing, it's like that can be really hard to come back from. Because in order to be that way, which you need to be that way, um, you need to be that way because if everyone is that way, then we're going to win. And nothing is more important than winning, right? Like veteran mental health, leading a good, happy life. I'm sorry, but that's not as, that's not more important than winning the fucking battle. It's not. Because if you lose the battle, and you keep losing battles, and you lose the war, well then, you know, you might end up having to speak Chinese. You might end up having to speak Russian, because that nation now has conquered you. So you can't lose. So you need this fucking psycho mindset. You need it. There's no way around it. You're an active duty grunt. Killing better be one of the fucking greatest joys of your life. But when you come home and you have now changed into this animal, um, that's going to fuck up relationships. It's going to fuck up your ability to connect to other human beings. Because at that point, the only people you can really connect to are other people who have also loved killing. And there's very few of us who got to that point um, in society. It's all over the grunts, but in society, it is not. In society, that's reserved for fucking criminals, for people who belong in jail. Like that mindset, that mentality, for, for people who belong in jail. But it's needed to win wars. And then you dump back into society. It's like... You know, all these people are doing, leading happy lives, doing fun things, and you're still have you know living with this really fucking over overly alpha, overly aggressive, god com narcissistic god complex, sociopathic mindset where you don't kind of care about anyone's feelings, not even your own. Right, like an inability to acknowledge 
respect and have compassion for feelings, that's fucking sociopath. That's what that means. At least it's part of the definition. And that's what you have to become when you're in war. When you're fucking slaying bodies. And, you know, you get to the point where it's like, I remember thinking about watching pro football and being like, those fucking pussies, they think scoring touchdowns is fun. <sighs> think sacking a quarterback gets them all rah, excited and shit. It's like, have you killed anyone, buddy? Have you? And shut the fuck up. You ain't shit. <laughs> That's how I was. <laughs> Fucking lost all respect for football players because they thought they were such badass warriors. Media makes them into these gods of war on the battlefield that is the football field. And I'm like, really, buddy? Do you even kill, bro? <laughs> Have you ever fucking taken another life and felt that? Felt that power? Have you? No? Okay. Then shut your little fucking bitch ass up. That's what I used to be like. I'm not like that anymore. Basketball players, you know, draining the three with the hand in their face, or maybe fucking faking left, driving right, taking it to the house and fucking banging it in someone's face. Right? They think they're Rawr! LeBron. Kevin Garnett, KG, slapping their hands together with a chalk. Ah! Shut the fuck up, bitch. That's what I used to think. You ain't shit. Watching gangbangers, thug rappers, doing this shit. I hated them. I really did. And it was because I thought, because I was a killer, because I had taken life, that I was better than all of them. That's part of that God complex, that narcissistic shit. And, uh, I'm drooling on myself, fuck me. And, it's taken a while. Well, it didn't take, it, it, it probably took me a couple years to let go of that. And when I just heard this, um, he was a black machine gunner in the army, Vietnam. He said that he he came home with that same thing, that same complex that I just described. And he kept walking by this church. And he would, every time he would just think, he's watching me sing as a gospel choir and in Florida. And finally, one day he went in there. And he said he was surrounded by such nice people. They were so kind and nice and loving that all of a sudden he didn't feel the need to carry that I'm a fucking killer that kind of I don't know if it's a front because it was him but it was an identity and he didn't feel the need to live that identity anymore once he was around all of these nice people and the more he, st he started going that Sunday, and he, he never stopped. Joined the choir. And he said, around these people, I could be my old self. I could be the old me before I joined the army. And became a machine gunner and became a killer. And through that, he was able to find his old self again. And find a new identity for himself. And to look at that, that crazed machine gunner. And be like, that's not who I want to be. And he was able to find joy, happiness, and love again. And that was how he was able to move on from the war. And that is exactly what every single fucking warfighter needs to do. Just they need to find a group of people where they don't have to be that fucking alpha, aggressive, 
tough guy killer. Okay? Because we're all a different version of ourselves around different people. Um, you know, when you're hanging out with some of your high school buddies, depending on what they were like, that's one version of you. When you're hanging out with your parents and your siblings, that's another version. Um, if you have a job, like let's say you're, um, I don't know, I'm sure what the jobs warriors do. You have a teacher. I know a few guys who went into teaching. Um, if you find an environment, I'm sorry, um, some of us have, let's say you go visit an old folks home, right? And you just want to spend time with old people and listen to them and talk to them, make them feel good. That's a different side of you. Um, when I'm around my niece, nephew, it's a different side of me that comes out. It's a totally different fucking human being. And it's your responsibility no one's going to make you do this shit. You need to do this. It's on you. You need to place yourself in different environments. Get away from bars. Get away from the motorcycle club. I know motorcycle clubs are important to a lot of people. You need to spend some time away from that with a completely opposite group of people. Like a fucking church. Maybe it's around musicians. Maybe it's around a bunch of caretakers. You need to be around a group of nice, loving, happy people. Okay? And I remember a lot of us, when I was in, you know, I would look at groups of, of people who were like, like the festival crowd and shit. I would look at them and be like, oh, a bunch of fucking hippies, fucking pussies. You know, I'd make fun of them and I would, I would demean their happiness and their joy. Because it wasn't this tough, fucking violent thing. And all that I looked up to and respected and wanted to be a part of was tough, alpha, violent, aggressive. And I was like... So, it is your responsibility to find these other environments where... Um, you get to see a different version of yourself. You have to put your judgment aside, place yourself in this new environment, and see yourself in a new way. That right there is how you build a new identity for yourself. It's by placing yourself in a new environment and seeing yourself in a new way. Just like that machine gunner from Vietnam did in the church. So around those people, he was like, it brought out a different side of me. And it was the old side. And he loved that. That made him happy. And that's who he is now. Everyone has to do that. Especially all the guys that hang out in fucking shitty environments. And I'm sorry. I know a lot of you guys out there, I know a lot of you, you love the fucking motorcycle club because it gives you a sense of community, belonging, brotherhood, camaraderie, all of those healthy things, right? And I get it. Don't stop going, right? But you have to understand those environments are still not going to help you develop a new identity for yourself. It's not. It's going to carry on the old mentalities, because motorcycle clubs are the hella alpha, they're aggressive, it's all about, you know, fitting in, being one of the guys, they're generally hella misogynistic, they don't treat women well, they're generally in the motorcycle clubs, don't try and deny that, and that's not healthy, if you're looking at women, like, if you're still looking at women like we did when we were in the grunts, like women are significantly beneath you, um, you're not going to have, you're not going to be the happy person that you need to be. It's not possible. You can't do that. You can't look at any, you can't view other people like that. It's a damaging, toxic mindset. You have to get out of that, for any environment that has that mindset, that in, and in general, just looks down on women, looks down on people of color, or just on any group, gay, you name it. You have to get out of that. So make yourself fucking once a week, start with once a month, then once a week, and a couple times a week. 
and you'll see this other version of yourself. And you might be like, oh, I like that version of me better. That is, um, that should be everyone's goal. To see, to keep placing yourself in new environments, to keep seeing different versions of yourself until you find a version that you like better than the guy who was in the grunts. That's what you need to do. Even if you weren't in the grunts, in, in combat arms, call Gamma West is in the Marine Corps, the, the Marine Corps is just can be toxic as fuck, so everyone needs to do it. And additionally, um, so what, what happened when that, when that machine gunner went into that environment uh, with nice people in the church? His, his ego finally came down. His ego finally went, you know, you're here. Oh my God, I kill her. You're going to need to just, oh, hey, hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And come in. What's up, buddy? Hey, brother, I'm re I'm recording something real quick, so give me uh, give me five. Okay. Love ya. Um, and another way to bring your ego down is with mushrooms. And I remember looking at mushrooms like. No, I'll never talk that. That scary hippie shit. You're gonna have a trip. You're gonna be crazy, and all this shit. And um, I was recommended by a friend, um, Matt Griffin from Combat Flip Flops. He recommended it to me. It's like your ego needs this, dude. And uh, and I did it. And I was like, Good God, I need this so much. It helped me see a different version of myself that I liked more. Because without my ego, I actually have compassion. Fucking grunts are like, compassion? Huh? Uh, uh. I don't know what that is. Fucking eat some mushrooms. You'll feel compassion. You'll feel empathy. You'll be able to feel what someone else... You'll fir first, you're going to feel what you're feeling. Then you're going to feel what others are feeling. And then it's like, whoa. Sometimes it's fucking... It's too much. It's like, okay, i got to stop feeling what others are feeling. It's killing me. I used to be an empath when I was younger. Had to get a little socio going into the, you know, being a killer. And then now I'm coming back to being a balanced empath uh, where I can function because it used to be kind of crippling. I see people with disabilities, I just start crying. Um, so that's not functioning. But it's important to see that different version of yourself. And that ego is what is tied to your identity. So when you lose your ego, now it's like, well, you, what your identity becomes as when you lose your ego is that of a child. Right? You just live with this curiosity. You live with the desire to love other people and to feel loved. And you feel more intensely. Children don't have governors on their feelings. When, when the kid goes to cry, it's... Ah! When the kid goes to feel joy, it's... Ah! Right? It's, it's up here. The intensity of what they feel is up here because there's no governor. We develop a governor as we get older. Especially military guys. There's a governor on how much sadness you can feel. You ever watch a fucking, you know, military guy try talking about something sad? He's like... Ooh. He's fighting the urge to cry. It's like, why, bro? I can see your fucking soul is filled with tears. So, what are you... You're not hiding. I can see it. Ooh. You are hiding what I can see you're feeling. Just let it go. That's what a lot of guys need to do. You don't need to do it in, pub in public. Do it by yourself. A lot of guys just need to fucking open up the faucet. Fucking cry for three hours. And then it's like, oh, wow. Jesus. Oh, I needed that. And then all of a sudden you sleep like a baby. It's crazy. Um, I share all of this because I want, I want warriors, um, to lead a happy life. I want them to find happiness and to find joy. And I want them, once they find it, I want them to share how they did it with others. 
and then it becomes infectious, it becomes toxic. We all start feeling the joy and the happiness and the love, and it's a different way of living. What Irreverent Warriors is doing as an organization is creating an environment, the Silky Sykes, where the egos can come down and where we can all feel happiness and love and joy. You see all everyone just hugging, hugs, high fives, butt slaps with permission. Um, it's an incredibly loving environment that can be a catalyst for finding a new identity for yourself. It's part of why I love going to the festivals. I used to look at them as fucking hippie weirdos. Now I'm one of them. And I love it. It makes me so happy to be around just nice fucking happy people. I go to festivals by myself sometimes. Eat mushrooms. Just walk around dancing, making friends. And then it becomes one of my favorite things then. To so start a dance circle. I just like to make people laugh. It's like always a challenge. Say, can I get these strangers to laugh? And once I get them to laugh, I'm connected. And I can make friends with them. Dance. Listen to fucking great music. Go take a nap. Stretch. Go to the next artist. Meet up with some friends that are there at the show. It's incredible. Being in that environment. In a happy, loving, fucking environment. Is it's necessary for good mental health. You can't come back from war, from being a fucking crazed killer, and not change the environment in a very intense way. You must change your environment. So, I hope that, um, I hope this sticks with, uh, with as many of you as possible. I hope that you can find joy and happiness and feel love and be loved and live a great life. Because it would suck for all of our dead friends to, ne to never be able to feel love again and give love and to watch us still being miserable. That's fucking pathetic, honestly. They'd be mad. And honestly, when I see veterans, just... Uh, it's like refusing to change their life for the better. It's like you're wasting your life, bro. Would any of your dead homies be fucking pumped about the way you're living your life? No. They'd, they'd be ripping on you. They'd be so disappointed. You owe it to yourself first. To make the most out of every fucking day of your life. To do as much as you're capable of. To feel as much joy and love and happiness as you can. Then you owe it to your family who raised you to fucking to lead a great life. Because people tried to give you a good life. Then you owe it to your dead buddies. Then maybe to society and to this country that has given us a great opportunity here. Because America's not perfect. But... Have you lived anywhere else? You seen how they live? Last I checked, they're willing to risk their lives to leave their fucking countries to come to this one. So we have to appreciate what we have here. You know, it's not perfect. We got to work to make it better. Um, and make sure that we all treat each other with love and respect. Get fucking hate and racism out of our society. Get that shit out. Get misogyny out of our society. Have a healthier perception of women, people of color gays, LGBT, all that shit. Like, stop being so judgmental and just learn to love and appreciate other human beings. If we all did that, then mental health would be fucking go through the roof. I said, I said to Reverend Warriors at one of our retreats, the key to good mental health is everyone just be nice to each other. Try it. It's crazy. Alright, I'm coming up on 25 minutes. But, um, I hope this helped. Peace and love, y'all.